and we will then start the study of Sophocles and um, Oedipus the King. We'll probably finish Oedipus Wednesday of next week and then start Antigone and then we have spring break. So we're picking up <coughs> Hamlet Act 5, scene 2, I believe it is, uh, pages 60, 94, and 95. And I believe where we left off the other day um, was with Hamlet and or somebody correct me if I'm wrong, was where Hamlet and Horatio are talking about the upcoming fencing match. And Hamlet has said, you know, something's troubling him about it. Horatio says, if your reason okay, is giving you problems, then don't go through with it. Hamlet said he's got a trouble around his heart. All right? And then Hamlet gave the, the little speech, I'm pretty sure that we talked about it, about there being a special providence in the fall of an arrow, and I talked about Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31, and Luke 12, verses 6 through 7. They're the same passages. It's just different passage and um, same passage, different gospels. Okay? Where Hamlet says, If it be now to, to not to come, if it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. And the it that he refers to there. Is death. And then he sums it up by saying, the readiness is all. Okay? Meaning, you have to be ready to die. When? Now. If it's not now, then okay. Then it'll be later. All right? And he's kind of telling us, well, Hamlet's been telling us from the beginning of the play, he's ready to die. I mean, his first speech, the, the oh, that this too, too sullied flesh would thaw, melt, resolve itself into a dew. I mean, that's essentially saying, oh, kill me now, God, because life just is too bad, too horrible, All right? So the king comes in with several others. We're told a table is prepared, trumpets, drums, officers with cushions, king and queen, Osric, and all the state are brought in. Now, all the state, I think, means all those officials that come in at the first big scene of the play, when the king and queen come in, and Claudius delivers this big, long speech, where he thanks everybody for going along with his plans. His plans meaning the burial of his dead brother and his marriage to the dead brother's sister, uh, excuse me, to his dead brother's wife, and, it's going to be alluded to, um, and allowing him to be king. Okay? That's what Hamlet was referring to, passage we talked about the other day, in Act 5, Scene 2, bottom of six, page 1691, when Hamlet says, Does it not think thee, stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king, whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes. And we talked about how in Germanic society, even though you do have the law of primogeniture in many Germanic societies, you did also have a, a council of essentially what are called electors. That's where the founding fathers got the idea of the electoral college. They got the idea of the electors from that. Okay? And the council of electors Essentially, for the most part, they just rubber stamped the eldest son. So if he has an eldest son, he's going to be king, and they approve it. What Hamlet is, is saying here in this one passage, line 217 or so, is that Claudius got between Hamlet and the election. In that big opening speech, when he says, you know, you gave your assent... Claudius, talk, I'm talking about. When he says, you gave me your assent, he's saying, not only did you assent to my marrying Gertrude, you also assented to my becoming king. Okay? So, back to where we were. Um, king, the whole state, essentially. Not all the people, but just the, 
the powerful, the cabinet, you know, heads of government and such. They all come in. And the king takes Laertes towards Hamlet, and he puts Laertes' hand in Hamlet's hand. Why? As a sign of friendship, as a sign of peace. Okay? It's like when two boxers come out into a ring. What are they supposed to do? They don't do it all the time. Shake hands or touch gloves. It's a sign of respect. Okay? So, he says, come, Hamlet, come and take this hand from me. Hamlet does. And he says to Laertes at that point, give me your pardon, sir. That is, give me your forgiveness. Why? I have done you wrong. So he asks for Laertes' forgiveness, and then he apologizes. I've, I've done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence, all the people here, okay, this presence knows. And you must needs have heard how I am punished with sword distractions. That is, everybody in this room knows I've been acting a little screwy of late. Okay? In that word distraction, we've seen it or a relative like distracted, several times throughout the play. Well, this is the root of that. Tract. That is the root of the word tractor. What's it mean? What do you do with a tractor? You pull things behind it. Okay? It drags. And the dis means obey. Hamlet is saying, everybody in this room knows I've been mentally kind of dragged away. I've not been, use language we would use today, on my game. I've not been on target. I've been slightly off. All right? But notice Hamlet says how I am punished with this distraction. Okay? He's not saying that he freely decides to be distracted. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim, was madness. Now you've got a glass, gloss for exception. It means disapproval. So, what I have done that might your nature, that is your birth, all right, your honor, his honor as a gentleman, as a knight, and your disapproval, roughly awake. Awake. I disturbed your nature, your sense of a gen as a gentleman, and your disapproval. How? What I have done. Notice that's a euphemism. Because what does it refer to? What is it Hamlet's done that's pissed off Laertes? Killed his father. I mean, that's pretty serious. But he doesn't say, I killed your father. He says, what I have done. Notice he makes it very, very passive. All right? But what does, does he then attribute that to? It wasn't me. It was madness that did that. That's the distraction. Okay? Was it Hamlet wrong to Laertes? Never Hamlet. That is, no. <laughs> Not only no, but I would never wrong you, Laertes. Well, what did we see Hamlet said to Laertes earlier, Act 5, Scene 1, when he jumps in the grave? He jumps in the grave, they grapple, they get out of the grave, they're separated, and Hamlet says, I ever loved you. That is, I always regarded you as a friend. Here he's saying, because of that, it's tied to that, I would never harm you. So, if Hamlet didn't do it, if Hamlet from himself be taken away, dragged away, right? And when he's not himself, 
does wrong Laertes. That is, if Hamlet up here is taken away and this Hamlet wrongs Laertes, he says, then Hamlet, this Hamlet, the intellect Hamlet, the soul Hamlet, does it not. Hamlet, the intellect that can say, I didn't do it. It's the first insanity defense in all of human history. It's the first time anybody said, suggested, even implied, well, I can't be held responsible for that action because I wasn't in my right mind. Notice even that phrase, I wasn't in my right mind. What's that imply? The I was somewhere else. The right mind was somewhere else. The I that was here wasn't right. <laughs> okay, it, Something was screwy with it. So, Hamlet says, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet, the I in my right mind, denies it. So who does it then? Notice he's not saying, your father wasn't murdered. Your father wasn't killed. Why not? Because Polonius is dead. He's been put in the ground already. So he's got to attribute Polonius' death to something. Who does it then? His madness. His madness. If it be so, that is, if I'm right in this legal argument that Hamlet seems to be making, If the madness is responsible, then Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. Why so? Because in his might right, right mind, Hamlet would never do that. But the madness that took over has done it. And that has impugned Hamlet's character. Okay? Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. That makes sense. Do people choose to go mad? Do they choose to go? No, they don't. That it comes. And sometimes it comes and it goes. Okay? So, Hamlet says, Sir, in this audience that is in front of everybody here, king, queen, Horatio, Osric, and other lords and such, okay? He says, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I've shot mine arrow over the house and hurt my brother. So, I'm declaring in front of all these people, I never purposed any evil against you. Purposed. Intended. What's he saying? I'm not guilty of it. And when I killed Polonius, I never intended to harm you. He's also saying, I didn't intend to kill Polonius. That was my that was not my purposed evil. Well, if there was a purposed evil, what was it? Kill the king. See, this is why it goes back to Hamlet's speech to Ophelia at the end of the to be or not to be speech. What did he tell Ophelia? Do you have a father? She says, yes, I do. Tell him to stay in his own house. Play the fool in his own house. Why? He might get hurt if he doesn't. That's why you get the, I have shot my arrow or the house, it hurt my own brother. He's essentially saying, Larry, you're like a brother to me. Okay, now think about this for a moment. Here he says, you're my brother. We're told he loved Ophelia more than the sum of 40,000 brothers' love could total. So he really loved Ophelia. And he loves Laertes like a brother. Do you think it's likely that he therefore then hated Polonius? No. Doesn't this 
necessarily mean he looked at him like as a, you know, surrogate father or anything. But usually if you've got friends and, and you really like those friends and you know the parents, you get along well with them. I think that's the implication here. Until Claudius got involved, until Claudius killed Hamlet Sr., Hamlet got along well with Polonius. Okay? Laertes, I'm satisfied in the nature. Your gloss tells you. He's personally satisfied. Personally there means according to my blood requirement for vengeance. You killed my father. All right. But he says, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. That is, my nature, my sonship to Polonius is the thing that should give me the greatest motive to kill you. But he says, I'm satisfied with that. Okay, you've taken that off the table, Hamlet. But in terms of honor, I stand aloof. That is, I stand off. Honor hasn't been addressed. Why is that significant? Go back for just a moment. Two. Act four. Where <coughs> Hamlet talks with the captain, pages 16, 70, and 71. He's making his way to the ship to get on the ship to go to England with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. He meets the captain. The captain says, we're from Norway. We're going to go make war on Poland. 20,000 men are going to die for a little crappy piece of property. Okay. And Hamlet says, in response to all that, line... 51, 2, 3, 54. Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honor is at the stake. Okay. Laertes has said, in terms of my your blood debt to me, you killed my father, and therefore I need vengeance. That's resolved, but he says, but my honor isn't. That is, something still has to resolve the question of my honor. Your blood debt, that's fine, but there's still the sense of honor. You still killed my father. I've... That's got to get resolved. And how does he mean it has to get resolved? Will no reconcilement till by some elder masters of known honor I have a voice and precedent of peace. That is, until he hears from some elder masters, elder teachers, judges, he gets what? Some authoritative pronouncement. What's he asking for? What's he saying he really needs for that sense of honor to be um, satisfied? Somebody else has got to intervene here and say, yeah, it was your madness that did it. In other words, he's kind of saying, there needs to be some kind of judicial or legal agreement. Why? Because if I don't get that, then my sense of honor demands vengeance. All right? So he says, until then, until that official pronouncement comes, I do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. I receive your offered love like love, as if it really is love. And I won't do anything against it. True or false? Is he telling the truth or is he lying? What's he getting ready to do in less than three minutes? They're going to have a fencing match. Only problem is, 
Hamlet doesn't know what about the foil or rapier that Laertes is going to use. Poison. It's going to be poison. And the tip is going to be off so that the point will be there. And it'll pierce his clothes. It doesn't have to go deep in. It's just got to be enough to draw blood. Because once the poison hits blood and blood starts to move throughout his body, he's going to tell Hamlet, Hamlet, you got 30 minutes. Okay? So when he says that, when he responds to Hamlet, notice he doesn't go, okay, Hamlet, I... My, your blood debt to me is solved. Therefore, we're not going to have this fencing match because the king and I have plotted against you. And, oh, take a look at my rapier. The tip's off. Don't touch it because it's pointed in blood. It's tipped. He doesn't do that. Okay? So, they get ready to fight. Hamlet says to Laertes, top of page 1696, line 220. Eight or so. I'll be your foil, Laertes. Okay? And Shakespeare's punning there because they're using foils to fight with. But he's also saying, I'll be your foil. And a foil is a character in literature whose characteristics, whose traits are designed to bring out the good, positive, supportive. Traits and virtues of another character, all right? Sometimes a foil can, in literature, can be a setting. It can be time, all right? But Hamlet say, I'll be a foil for you. How so? Well, Horatio said before the battle even, before the match even begins, he said, you're going to lose. Hamlet said, no, no, no. Ever since he went off to University of Paris, I've been practicing. Why does Horatio say you're going to lose? Because he knows they're going to cheat? No, because he knows. Laertes is a better swordsman. And as Hamlet's mother says to him about Hamlet, he's fat and out of breath. Okay? Hamlet's not in great shape. I think the implication is Laertes is is. You know, if they were to rip off their shirts, Laertes would be ripped. Hamlet's, Hamlet would be like fat Thor. Laertes would be like hunky Thor. Totally different, right? So Laertes says, you're mocking him. No, seriously, no, I'm not. You will look better compared to me. All right? So, King says, let's get ready. And he puts two cups of wine out on the table. He says, if Hamlet gets the first or second hit, let all the battlements fire their ordnance so they do like a 21-gun salute if Hamlet gets a hit. That is, if Hamlet touches Laertes with the baited tip of his foil, because it's you can't slap him with it. You can't hit him with the side. It's got to be a touch like this. And the way you usually know you have a touch in this day is because the foil bends. It's really thin, right? Today, you know, because fencers' suits have electronic sensors. And if it gets touched, but beep, then you know, all right? So he says, and if Hamlet gets a hit, he gets a drink, right? Because it's poison. So, they battle, or they play, sorry. And Laertes says, come, my lord. Notice Hamlet began, come on, sir. Laertes, what are they doing? They're sitting there going, come on, have at it. Okay, so they get ready, and Hamlet says, what? Laertes, no, you did not. You didn't hit me. Osric says, a hit, a very palpable hit. There's a drum, trumpets, shot is fired off. Right? Laertes says, all right, let's do it again. You only need three points in a fencing match. You only need three hits to win. Okay? So, King says, no, no, wait, stop, Hamlet, take a drink. 
Hamlet's like, no, I'm not thirsty yet. Okay. Hamlet gets another hit. Laird says, yeah, that's right. He's now up 2 nil. He only needs one more hit. Okay. King says, our son shall win. The queen, top of 1697, line 259. He's fit and scant of breath. Okay. Now remember, Hamlet said earlier, I think it was in his speech with Gertrude, something about, you know, he's left off his exercises. That doesn't mean like calisthenics. It means the kinds of the way he orders his day normally. And probably one of the things he does is he has fencing training. And what he's suggesting in that little speech is, I stopped doing that too. Okay? So, the queen says, the queen carouses to thy health, Hamlet, and she reaches down for one of the goblets, the one with wine, with poison, and she drinks it. And the king's like, no, no, too late. Okay. Laertes says, my lord, I'll hit him now. King, I do not think it. I don't think you will. Laertes, and yet, this aside, remember, it's only to an audience. Hamlet doesn't hear it. And yet, it is almost against my conscience. Why is it almost against his conscience? Because he told Hamlet, you've, you've taken revenge off the table already. All right? Hamlet says, come on. Come on, let's fight. You but dally, I pray you pass with your best violence. I am afeard you make a wanton of me. Hamlet saying, come on, Laertes, really try. It's like Laertes is right-handed, and he's been fighting left-handed. Hamlet saying, you are making fun of me. Laertes, say you, you think, okay, come on. It's that little speech by Hamlet that kind of angers Laertes. That's what the say you so, come on. Okay? And they play. Osric, no, no points. Laertes, have at you now. And Laertes lunges. He gets a point, but he stabs Hamlet. They scuffle. Rapiers, foils get exchanged. Hamlet stabs him back. Okay? The king says, part them, they are incensed. That is, this is no longer play. They're going to kill each other if they don't stop. Hamlet, come on! The queen falls. Horatio, wait, they're bleeding. They shouldn't be bleeding. Points should be baited. There should be rubber, plastic, wooden tips on them. Okay. Ostrich asks, how is it, Laertes? That is, how is your wound? How bad is it, is what he's asking. Laertes, how is it? Why is a woodcock to mine own spring, Osric? We heard that phrase, woodcock to springs, reversed when Polonius was talking to Ophelia. He told Ophelia, Hamlet's letters, his tenders of affection to you, they were springs to catch woodcocks. Right? So Hamlet responds, to, uh, Laertes responds to Osric and says, how is it with me? I'm the woodcock caught by my own spring. I'm, let's use a phrase that Hamlet uses earlier. Okay? I'm the engineer hoist by my own petard. I am justly killed with mine own treachery. Hamlet, how's the queen? The king, oh, she fainted because she saw blood. What's the king doing? Oh, yeah, don't worry about the queen. She's okay. She'll be fine. Laertes. Uh, the queen says, no, no, the drink, the drink. I'm poisoned. Hamlet. Hamlet commands the doors to be closed. And Laertes says, in response to Hamlet's seek out treachery, it's here, Hamlet. What does it mean, it's here? It's, is it here in the room? Yes. But if I were directing, I would have Laertes go, it's here, Hamlet. 
And he points to himself and he points to the king. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good, and thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poison, I can no more. I can means two different things. It means I can do no more. Why? Because I'm poisoned too. I've got less than half an hour. Okay. And it means I know no more. That word can has its also, in this context, has its older, older English meaning of no knowledge. I don't have any more knowledge, Hamlet. In other words, the rest is kind of secret. The king, the king's to blame. So Hamlet says, and the point is venom? Then venom do thy work. And he stabs the king. And all, this is everybody but Hamlet, Laertes, and Horatio, cry out, treason, treason. Because I think the king tries out, cries out treason too. Why? He's just attempted to kill the king. Defend me, friends, Hamlet. Hear, thou incestuous, murderous, damned dame. Drink off this potion. And he holds him, and he kind of waterboards him with the poison. I mean, he makes him swallow it. So he's going to die from the poison in the stab wound and the poison from the cut. Laertes, he is justly served. Laertes means that's justice. That's real justice. Why? How do you kill Hamlet's father? Poison. Poison. Okay. It is a poison tempered, mixed by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Noble, right bearing, right behaviors. Okay. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. So, exchange forgiveness. Why? Because he's about to die. And he wants Hamlet to forgive him. Hamlet's already asked for his forgiveness, right? <laughs> Hamlet's already apologized for killing his father. So he says, exchange forgiveness with me. My death and my father's death come not upon you. The Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers. Forgive us our sins, our debts, as we forgive those who sin or have a debt against us. Notice, you know, in traditional Christian theology, the way that's understood is if I don't forget somebody, forgive somebody else, then I'm not forgiven either. Not by that person, but by God. And if I forgive somebody else, then God automatically the way Christian theology traditionally understands this, you know, God automatically forgives that other person. If I forgive them, gone, washed away. So, he says, I forgive you for my death and for my father's death. Gone, wiped away. And then he says, nor let your death be on me. That's his asking forgiveness. Hamlet, heaven make me free of it. Done. <laughs> Cleared. When Hamlet Sr. died, notice he died what? Unforgiven and unable to forgive. Because he died in his sleep without any opportunity prior to confess to anybody. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. Notice, heaven make you free of it. Hamlet saying what? You're going to heaven. And I'm right behind you. I'm dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, adieu, she's already dead. You that look pale and tremble at this chance that are but mutes or audience to this act, had I but time, but he doesn't. Who's he talking to? Everybody else in the room. Why are they pale? 
in mutes or audience to this act. Well, they're pale because they've just seen a king and queen killed, and Hamlet and Laertes are dying. They're in shock. Okay? They're mutes or audience to the act. Performers in a play who speak no words, mutes, or audience. Oh, I could tell you. He could tell them what? Why Claudius had to die. So why doesn't he? Because he doesn't have time. But let it be. Horatio, I am dead. Thou livest. Report me and my cause are right to the unsatisfied. Horatio, like, hell no, man. I'm like an antique Roman. Antique Roman, more like one than a Dane. That is, I'm going to die with my lord. And he gets ready to grab the poison to drink it. Hamlet's like, no, you're not. And he drinks it. Okay? Why? Why doesn't he let Horatio die with him? He wants his story told, and he wants the king's, the next king to be chosen, kind of. Okay. The first part. Why is it important that he tells the story? Well, he wants someone that knows the truth to tell the story. He wants the truth to be told. Okay. That's why he says, report me and my cause are right to the unsatisfied. Who are the unsatisfied? Both the people in the room who don't know the real story and everybody outside. Remember when Laertes arrived, what were the crowds doing? Laertes, La we want Laertes as king. Why weren't they calling for Hamlet to be king? Could be. What's the other reason? Because he's crazy, where is he at that point? On his way to England. See, the people know that Hamlet's been sent to England. So he's not in Denmark anymore. So he tells Horatio again. Horatio, what a wounded name, thinks standing thus unknown, shall live behind me. If you die with me, what are people going to say about me? <laughs> He says, yeah, I'll have a wounded. Everybody will think horribly of me. If thou didst ever hold in thy heart, if thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, absent thee from happiness, from joy, from blessedness a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Where is he saying felicity, happiness, joy are? When you're dead. When you're dead. Because what do you get in this world? You have to draw thy breath in pain. Hold, hold your book open to that pot, spot for just one moment. And turn to page 1484. This is the next play we're going to do. It's Sophocles, Oedipus the King. And the very last line of that play. Last two lines. Lines 1684 and 85. Now as we keep our watch, this is the chorus speaking. Now as we keep our watch and wait the final day. That is our last day alive. alive. Count no man happy till he dies. Free of pain at last. There's an old, what used to be called, Negro spiritual, old black spiritual, sung, uh, arose probably from the slaves, that, go, that has a refrain in it. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. What's the free at last? It's not the freedom from physical slavery or bondage. It's the spiritual freedom of free of life. Okay. 
And the reason it resonates so much is because it is very, quote-unquote, Christianly spiritual. Because in the Christian tradition, life here is bondage for everyone. St. Paul says everyone is enslaved to sin. In freedom comes elsewhere. Now I'll go back to where we were with him. So, uh, Hamlet dies, his last words, the rest is silence, okay? Before, just before then, he says, I prophesy the election will go to Fortinbras. He has my vote. Why? Hamlet was one of these electors. He's one of the high-ranking people in society, okay? Or in the Danish kingdom. And Fortinbras comes in, and he asks, where is this site, Horatio? What, what would you like to see? Fort Brown, this quarry cries on havoc. O oh, proud death, what feast is toward in thine eternity? Fort Brown comes in, he's like, what the hell's been going on here? Because he can see the dead king, and he's pretty sure it's the king because of the clothing he wears. He sees the dead queen because of the clothing she wears. He sees Hamlet. He sees Laertes. He probably doesn't know who Hamlet and Laertes are, okay? And Horatio explains a little bit. Line 350, line 350. He says, give order that these bodies high on a stage be placed to the view. And let me speak to the yet unknowing world, everybody out there, how these things came about. And here's what you're going to hear. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts. Carnal, that means having to do with the body. Usually it implies sexual stuff. Claudius and Gertrude, okay? Bloody, death. Lots of death, right? And it's going to start with what? Claudius killing Hamlet. Hamlet killing Polonius. Ophelia dying. Laertes killing Hamlet. Hamlet killing Laertes. Hamlet killing Claudius. Claudius accidentally killing Gertrude. Because he puts the poison in the wine. Okay. And unnatural. Why unnatural? Brother killing brother is unnatural. Brother marrying brother's wife is unnatural. Okay. Of accidental judgments. What ho, a rat! I took thee for thy better. Oops. That's, Ham that's what Hamlet means. Oops. Casual slaughters. Who is casually slaughtered that I didn't just mention in my list of those who died? Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Hamlet talks to Horatio about switching the letters. And it, Horatio is kind of like, so, so Rosencrantz and Guildenstern go to it then? It? Death? And Hamlet's like, yes, they made love to that word. They wanted to escort me to my death. I don't feel any guilt about that one. Okay. Of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in this upshot, and I think this upshot, he's saying, and overall, what? Purposes mistook, fallen on the inventor's heads. Purposes mistook, purposes, ends, intentions. Doing what? Falling on the intender's heads. It's the law of unintended consequences. So Fortinbras says, yeah, bear them all out. And he says, in fact, bear Hamlet out how? 368, like a soldier. That is, put Hamlet on a stretcher and carry him up on your shoulders. Why? So he's elevated. So people, as the soldiers walk in a very dignified manner, carry him out, they kind of look and maybe even bow down a little. And then he says, bear the other bodies away. Wrap them up in a blanket so we don't have to look at them. They're not as important. 
Okay. And he finishes. Take up the bodies, the others, such a sign as this becomes the field. That is the battlefield. This shouldn't happen in a society like Denmark. But here shows much amiss. Go. Bend the shoulder. Soldiers shoot. And notice it ends with bend the soldiers shoot. How does the play open? It opens with the soldiers on the battlements saying, whoa, who's there? You know, thinking battle's about to come. Or where does the battle come from? It doesn't come from outside. It comes from inside. You know, you swear on the Constitution to defend the Constitution against what? All enemies, foreign and domestic. These are domestic. Okay, we don't have time to start uh, softly. But read the next thing in the syllabus, which is the background to the study of Sophocles, and read as much of Oedipus the King as you can. Expect to quiz. Let me point this out real quickly. Um, the background is Socrates. Pages 1434 through 41. On 1439, um, Greek tragedy is divided into five parts. Know what those five parts are. They're not in bold, but know what they are. Okay, it's at the top of 1439. Have a good weekend. Stay whatever warm, dry, cold.